Hello friends, Philip Larkin's greatest poem, Church Going, not, see the title is Church Going, but actually it is going to the church. The speaker or the narrator is going to the church, that is not for the function but uh, to the building. I think that is right from the very beginning I have been insisting on that or reminding you. Now when you look up, uh, look at these lines, you know, that is of the fifth stanza, 37, 38, 37, 38, 39 and 40, up to this, 40, half of 40 you can say, or two thirds of 40. So so up to this, it is, it is really meditative, speculation and it has got a meaning that is very abstract, so to say. If you look at it uh, from the, as the face value of those lines, you can say, it is a shape uh, less recognizable each week. What does that mean? I don't know. Each week what will happen? Some part of the building will fall down. And after some days, say after six months or so, there will be nothing left. So you cannot recognize that. Not that. That's not the meaning. The meaning is really out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind means if you stay away from the church, and practices in the church, rituals and so on, what will happen? Slowly it will go out of your mind. If you don't get keep in touch with these things, it will disappear from your mind. That's the meaning. A shape less recognizable each week. That means if you are staying away for a long period of time, that is that is the meaning a shape. Not that the shape of the building, that is not possible. No? Shape of the building, the church building, how can you, you, after six weeks or ten months or two or three years, go there, still it will be there and you can recognize. But what, what actually happening is, happening is the change that is taking place in your mind. The transformation that is taking place in your mind even without you being conscious of it. That is, that's what I told you, out of sight, out of mind. Therefore, what will happen? If you are not, see, that is again another uh, principle in nature. The last stanza, no, fourth stanza, we saw some universal principles. So also here, that is, Use it or lose it. If you don't use it, what will happen? You will lose it. The sense that anything to remain active, anything to remain green, green means you know nourish and flourishing, you have to have always contact with this. Even friendship, you know. So for a very long uh, years, suppose you have you don't have any contact with your friend, closest friend. What will happen is that slowly the shape of your friend will become less recognizable each day. And the purpose more obscure. What is the purpose of this? What is the purpose of the church? Rituals, then uh, ceremonies and uh, celebrations like Christmas, Easter, the celebration of the, the feast of the main deity of the church. Each church is devoted to a particular saint. St. Mary, St. Joseph's church, St. Mary's church and so on. So those festivals, suppose you are not conducting any, celebrating any festivals, naturally what will happen? It will simply become obscure. It will be, it will be pushed into oblivion, not only obscure, but deliberately we are pushing that into oblivion. Or we are abandoning it, the oblivion. So if in a mind, if you don't keep the religious spirit, if you don't keep the religious fervor, 
forever. If we are we are what? Alive, what will happen is slowly you will forget about this. That's what I said in simple words, out of sight, out of mind. So that is really a very, we can say again the same word that I used in the last class, it is profound meditation, no doubt. As Bertrand says, no, uh, the world is too much with us. Getting and spending, you have no time to stand and stare. So the world is too much with us, industrialization, consumerism, then materialism, uh, greed, profit making, exploitation. So this, these are indispensable items that is connected with capitalism, consumerism and uh, materialism. So that is what is happening. That it is, the point is pointing, pointing his fingers at, the, at these things. Because I told you this is meant for the poem was written. It was meant for middle class, working class people. Right? For reading. That's why the poem is simple. But at the same time, it has got a frost like, Robert Frost like gravity. So it begins in a very simple way. But frost, of course, the frost, whether that the frost, so the poet frost uses is, toward the end there is an epiphany. Epiphany means a revelation. As a stopping by woods on a snow evening. Miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. So it's something like that. But here what happens is this epiphany plays hide and seek throughout the poem, not the final. The revelation, the meditation, the skepticism, the irony, etc., you find playing hide and seek in almost every stanza. Now the remaining part of the stanza, it is mundane. Mundane is just worldly. There's no metaphorical meaning, nothing of that sort. One of the crew, crew means, you know, collective now, used to for the people who work in a ship. There's crew, crew of the ship, we say. So here one of the crew means, one of the members of uh, one of the members or the, one of the staff members of an archaeologist maybe or an architect maybe who is interested in collecting ruins or collecting or taking away things from dilapidated buildings. Old windows, some people do their business. They, just as we have got used to our business, we have got used the uh, building business also. Means you get the old windows or, or maybe some antique windows we don't know. So the remaining up to 44, line 44, it's nothing. Except that uh, other the other one I told you, know, a shape less recognizable is be a purpose more obscure. I wonder who will be the last, the very last to seek this place for what it was. So what is the purpose of this building? Spiritual versus spiritual base. Rituals were kept alive. Re religious ceremonies were conducted. Festivals, special prayers like novena, that is nine day prayer, adorations, worship, retreats. So these are things connected with the, the purpose of the church. This place for what it was, for what it was means now. Once I am sure, there is nothing going on. So, now nothing is going on. So, one, once upon a time, it was very active. It was, it was very, say the purpose was alive. It was teeming with activity. It was teeming with worshippers. What about now? The place. That's why it is 
some people have observed that this is an elegy on a country church, but Thomas Grey's elegy is a, an elegy on a country church yeah. So here is the church. It's a 20th century elegy on a church. On a church means all the churches. That's why the question, the place for what it was. So you have got a list of items to give, what it was. As just now I told you, rituals, ceremonies, festivals, retreats, worships, adoration. Then social, social relations such as establishing, such as marriage, administration of sacraments such as baptism, confirmation and so on. So, the church was always alive and active. As we said, the church was alive and kicking. That is. But now, nothing goes on. Now nothing goes on is not only in the church, but in the minds of the people. And that's impossible. That is the, that is the point to be noted. A shapeless recognition of each week doesn't mean that shape of the, the physical shape of the church, no. That would be a, I think that uh, any, it would be difficult to believe that. But on the other hand, what, what, I tell, uh, what I already told you, out of sight, out of mind. This is applicable to everything, human relations, using your materials, your studies, for example, so what happens after retirement? Many teachers, they say, oh, this is then Here endeth. <laughs> Once you retire from service, there is a here endeth. That means no books, no reading, nothing. Just lie down. And then say, oh, this is enough. I have done a lot of work. Then what will happen is a shape less recognizable each week. A purpose more obscure. This is applicable not only in spiritual life, in your professional life, your relationship with your friends, with your relatives, even within your family, this is applicable. Uh, it has a relevance, so to say. <clears throat> now you understand. So you can quote this you know, when you are saying goodbye to, or by a valedictory function. Or a retirement function, you can say, a shapeless recognition of with a purpose more obscure after some time. So, one of the reasons why people suffer these days you know, from alchemists is this memory loss is this out of sight, out of mind. They don't continue what they were doing. A good number of them. This is not my observation, observation this is the observation of the medical science. Okay, let us see. So it just got a, again a universal application. That's why I am trying to tell you. Now the remaining uh, part of that stands up to 44 line 44. You find one of the crew means Swibu that tap and jot tap. They will come and look like this. Doors, windows. How much? How far it has been? How far we, uh, it has been? Sorry, to what extent the ruin has taken place? Not how far, to what extent it has, the, it has been ruined. So they can tell it. Jot, they can not make notes on that. Tap and jot. Two windows, useless. One window, half, useful, like this. That is, tap and jot. So they make a, a kind of calculation. And they know what what root loves were, root loves. Root means root screen in the church. Root screen separates the chancel. That means the sanctum, sanctum from the place where the, uh, the faithful stand. So then there is a screen. That screen means it may be wooden, very elaborately carved. And just above that, there will be the crucifix. The crucifix, crucifix will be mounted. Root means the crucifix. So root, above this uh, root screen, the crucifix will be mounted. See, for example, suppose you have got a screen like this. 
home screen. And they are elaborate yes. above this there will be the home screen. So these things, this uh, rag pickets, you can say. And uh, the poet uses the word ruin bibes. Biber, bibere comes from Latin drink. So ruin bibers means those people who are very much interested in collecting ruins. So they come, they look at the road screen, look at the crucifix. Ah, oh, that is of some use, so we will take it. We will pay some money and take it away. So this way, uh, do business with that. Many people do it, you know. Old ruins, antics, business in antics and so So rule of sir. Some ruin people. Randy for antique. Randy for antique. They're greedy. Some people are very greedy for this. Some people, you know, you collect, you can see coins they collect. Some people collect stamp. Like that. This ruin people they collect antiques. Or that means pure business. They come here just for sake of business. They carry these things. For cheap rate they buy and sell it in the market. And they will, uh, they, 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 what they will do is that they will uh, create stories around it. So, or this crucifix is like this and if you touch it, some things will happen, some miracle will take place and so on. Because they want to sell it in the market and get money. So ready and the Randy for antique. Or it is it may be some Christmas addict. That's the kind of we should say irony as well as satire. There are people now who go twice three times in their life to a church. One for baptism which they don't know. <coughs> they have no idea about it. They be, when they are small babies, they are carried by their parents. And two other occasions when they are conscious is one marriage. In fact, only one occasion there is marriage. Then that for your funeral service will be taken. So three times they go to church. Baptism, you are not conscious. That you are not conscious. Not that baby is conscious of his going to church. So the only time in the life of a person who goes to a church with some intention is getting married. If you obey the rules of the society and the church. And there are some other people, they are addicted to certain festivals. One such festival is Christmas festival. So they are Christmas addicts. They will not go to church at any other time. Then there are Easter addicts. They go just for the celebration of Easter in the church. No other thing. So here he speaks about Christmas addict. I think that because when you take a statistics of this addicts, you find the 90% of them are Christmas addicts. There are only 10% who are Easter addicts. That's what he says. Christmas addicts. Because it's an addiction for them to go to church. Not for the sake of participating in the ceremony that is going on, but they are interested in gowns, in bands, and pipes, and organs, and myrrh, and incense. So if you go there, you can see you know, the Christmas Father, Santa Claus. So for that purpose they are going. It is to enjoy an exhibition of these things, not spiritual value. So, ruin mongers or randy for ruin bibers, ruin mongers. Manger means one who trades in something. Fishmonger means a person who trades in fish. Mong, mongung, etc. Latin means trade. So, here fishmonger or ruin mong. And people who are interested in the show, dance. And uh, then uh, pipe, pipe means musical instrument, fire, fireworks, myrrh, that is, it gives a very uh, 
pleasing smell like incense smell. So one of the items carried by the Magi, the three the Magi, you know, the, the three wise men who came from the east to worship Jesus Christ. Magi. Gift of the Magi. So there is the Stella and the Jim story. Christmas gifts. So that is. Now here what happens is, so the, there are such, such people. People who go for enjoying exhibition that day. People who go for picking rags of the church. Remnants of a ruined church. Just for the sake of collecting antiques. Or for making it a business. These are the type of people who go there. And last, he gives one more line for us to meditate. Or will it be, or will he be my representative? So that is, he himself is making fun of him. Or you can say he, he laughs at himself, at his own ghost. Will he be my representative? And who, what kind of a person am I? I am a pessimist. I consider that life is a real, real race of miseries. Then, I think probably he is the, uh, uh, as far as I know, he is the only librarian poet. There are poet critics are there, philosopher poets are there, but I think that he is the only uh, librarian poet. As far as my knowledge goes. There's a limit for that. Yes. So I hope that the, the last uh, line is, or will he be my representative? A person like me, who remained unmarried throughout his life, who spent all his time in libraries, say about 25 to 30 years he was in the University of Hull, the library, and uh, a gloomy person, a person on Sundays or whenever he gets time, he takes his cycle. He moves around on a bicycle, not a bike, motorbike, not uh, uh, bikes like the, there are the very costly motorbikes now. One famous one is, what is one of the famous motorbikes that people usually use? So such things he does not do. Royal and field those days. <laughs> Royal and field. He started using such uh, costly vehicles, but he takes a bike. Says whenever I feel like and his way he wants to make his doubly sure that there's nothing going on. He's against <laughs> I think it's an allergy for him, <laughs> these things. So once I'm sure it's nothing going on. I step inside, letting the door tap shut. And inside also, when he is standing there, he wants the door to be closed. Not that it should be open. Understand? So will he be my representative? Means person like me. And that is a disinterested uh, person. He's not concerned about any such thing. He goes there and he uh, sees things, observes things. He makes some universal or the, some conclusions which are which have universal applications. For example, as in this one, out of sight, out of mind. That's one. Secondly, things about who may be the very last who come who would be coming here, this place or what it was. So that question stands unanswered. So that means nobody will come. It's all gone. Who comes? We have already seen some people who are interested in collecting ruins and some other people who are addicts. Or on a particular day, addicted to the ceremonies of a particular day, that is Christmas. So the question, who will come here to seek this place for what it was? 
now it will come here. Accept this type of people. And at that type of people, he expects the personality that is a person like me. So he speculates that nobody will come to this place for what it was. Instead, people interested in collecting ruins, people interested in going to a, going to a church on a particular day because of his or her addiction to that day, or a person like me who goes around studying or observing the churches and wondering what would happen to churches when they are when they all fall completely out of use. So a meditating person, that is like me. So he expects three types of people. Already we have seen one, ruin bibis. Two, people addicted to certain days of the year. Three, persons like me who would be going around just for the sake of uh, a disinterested interest. So this, and in between he says, out of mind, out of, out of sight, out of mind, applicable to all human relations, all relations of humans with the material things, even your relation with your pet. Very long time you are absent and what will happen? It will forget you and you will, exactly like this, same thing will happen in your spiritual base, your spiritual life, your uh, relationship with God, your relationship to, uh, with God and which is worked out through the dynamics of which are worked out through the relationship between man and man, man and nature and man and animals. So if you don't keep these things alive, what will happen is will all disappear. The conditions, the environment is such. The environment is not friendly to such a situation because what we see is getting and spending, consumerism, materialism, profit making, exploitation, capitalism. So where is the time for all this? And hard working people, working class, they want some time for entertainment. So going for a film or watching a uh, so reading a story or listening to music, so that is the time for That is serious and religious life is also serious. Both cannot go together. And that may be the reason why he says, who will be the last? Who, who is going to come here for what it was? And then the remaining part, the remaining lines of the stanza it's the answer to that question. And these are three types of people. One, already I told you, one, two, three. Instead of repeating, I think now you, you are keeping those things in your mind. I hope you are enjoying my explanation of these stanzas of the librarian poet's poem, Church Going. Hope that we will be able to enjoy two more stanzas say in the near future. Till then if you have got any complaints or any negative points to point out, please do that. So till then, bye. Have a nice day.